November 12th, our Holy Father Martin the Merciful, Bishop of Tours. Saint Martin was born in 316 at Sabaria in modern-day Hungary, where his father, a Roman army officer, was stationed. But he grew up in Italy at Pavia, the native city of his family. Although his parents were idolaters, Martin began to go to church from the age of 10, and he asked to be received as a catechumen. He heard tell of the exploits of the hermits in the East, and as a 12-year-old, dreamt of leaving the cares of this world far behind by becoming a monk. But he had to obey his parents and join the army, as the law required in those days. Martin did not let military life present, prevent him from putting into practice the holy evangelic virtues. One winter's day, when he was 18 and was stationed at Amiens in Gaul, he met a poor man at the city gate, shivering for want of clothes. He had already given in alms the money he carried with him, but seeing that no one else was moved to pity, he drew his sword, cut his cloak in two, and ignoring the derision of his companions, put one half on the poor man's back and the other on his own. That night Christ appeared to him, clad in the part of the cloak he had given away, and the servant of God heard him say to the surrounding multitude of angels, Martin, well still a catechumen, has clothed me in this garment. He received holy baptism soon after this incident and wanted to leave the army to become a monk. But in the end, he deferred to the wishes of his commanding officer and remained a soldier, even though he was a monk in the depths of his heart. In fact, it was only many years later, in 356, when he was an officer of the Imperial Guard that he obtained his discharge. He went without delay to Poitiers to become a disciple of the great Saint Hilary, the Athanasius of the West. Before he went into exile in Phrygia, Hilary appointed Martin to the ministry of exorcist and blessed him to live in seclusion in a desert place. Saint Martin went to Pannonia in order to convert his aged parents and brought his mother to the faith. Then, as a faithful disciple of his spiritual father Hilary, he fought almost single-handedly against the Arians, whose heresy was widespread in Illyricum. After suffering much ill-treatment from the Arians, he returned to Italy, and there he learned that the church in Gaul had likewise been greatly troubled by heretics since the departure of St. Hilary. So he settled in a retired cell in the neighborhood of Milan in order to devote himself at last to the contemplation of God as he had wanted to do for so many years. But there, too, the Arians discovered him. Auxentius, the heretical bishop of Milan, drove him out, and he took refuge on the little isle of Gallinaria off the Ligurian coast. On Hilary's return from exile in 360, St. Martin hastened to join him. The monastic life was only just beginning in Gaul, and Martin, who settled in a narrow cell at Ligugé, not far from Poitiers, was almost its pioneer. His zeal for the works of righteousness and for prayer very quickly gave him knowledge and discernment on a par with the most experienced monks of the East, and aspirants to the angelic life were not slow in joining him as disciples. Some ten years later, in 371, when the See of Tours became vacant, the clergy and people of the city devised a means of laying hold of the servant of God in his wilderness and of consecrating him their bishop in spite of his reluctance. Episcopacy made no difference to his manner of life, which was ever marked by a humble spirit, poor clothes, and a meager allowance of food. He had all the dignity of a bishop without forsaking the way of life and the virtue of a monk. As the episcopal residence was too grand for his liking, he settled at first in a cell near the cathedral, but later, because of the constant flow of visitors, he moved to a hermitage on a wild spot about two miles outside the city, where his life of prayer would be less interrupted. This hermitage was the origin of the famous mon monastery of Marmoutier. The bishop dwelt in a wooden hut, and the many brethren who gathered round him settled in the caves of the overhanging mountain. There were about eighty monks living there in complete evangelical poverty, no one possessing anything that he called his own. 
They were united in brotherly love, worked only to provide for their daily needs, and devoted their days and nights to prayer and meditation under St. Martin's paternal guidance. Notwithstanding his love of solitude, the servant of God was conscious of his apostolic calling to be a preacher of the word of God and goal, which was Christian only in part. The gospel had penetrated the cities, but the countryside was still given up to idolatrous cults and superstitions. Martin was the first bishop to organize rural parishes in his diocese. He traveled all throughout the countryside, proclaiming the message of salvation, confirming the truth of his words by many miracles, and leading the country folk to destroy their idol temples with their own hands and to build churches in their place. The renown of the Bishop of Tours as a wonder worker extended beyond his diocese. Wherever the apostle of the countryside passed by, there were plenty of miracles. The sick were healed, the dead raised, and unbelievers found the faith as if Christ himself were come again in the person of the saint. His reputation and his authority impressed even the highest in the land. On three occasions he made his way to Trier, the seat of the emperor of the West, to intercede for his flock or to plead with the emperor Maximus for the lives of some Priscillianist heretics. At court as elsewhere, the holy bishop preserved the noble and assured bearing which was habitual in him from his ever-keeping company with God. He was without fear in the presence of the emperor and forthright in asserting the preeminence of the episcopal dignity above temporal authority. Whether in the country among the pagan peasantry or at court, whether in the solitude of his monastery or amid crowds in his bishopric, an exemplary humility and charity were always to be seen in the saint who persevered in fasting and vigil all his life long. His soul ever soared heavenward Martin never let an hour or a moment go by without giving himself to prayer or to reading, and even as he read or was otherwise occupied, he never ceased from prayer to God. He was never seen out of temper or disturbed, distressed or laughing, always one and the same, his face invariably shining with heavenly joy. He seemed to have surpassed human nature. In his mouth was nothing but the name of Christ, and in his soul nothing but love, peace, and mercy." But like Christ and all his faithful disciples, St. Martin had to endure trials. Some of his fellow bishops, jealous of his credit with the magnates and with the people, spoke ill of him, and even some of his relatives despised and unjustly accused him. St. Martin bore all such reproaches with unwavering charity and equanimity. One day he was taken ill in a country parish where he had gone, in spite of his 81 years, to make peace among the local clergy. He gathered his disciples and told them of his coming death. As they lamented and begged him not to leave them orphans, turning to the Lord, he responded, Lord, if thy people need me, I am willing to persevere in the defense of thy flock. Thy will be done. He continued in prayer until the end and would have nothing done for his comfort. As he lay on a bed of sackcloth and ashes, he said, It is unfitting for a Christian to die on anything but ashes. I would have sinned in giving you any other example. When the devil appeared in order to tempt him for the last time, the saint mocked him, saying, You will find nothing in me that belongs to you. Abraham's bosom is about to receive me. As he said these words, he gave up his soul to God, his face shining at that moment like the face of an angel. From his appearance, St. Martin seemed already to be in the glory of the future resurrection, clothed in other flesh. The holy bishop died on the 8th of November, 397. His funeral service took place at Tours on the 11th of November. In the presence of a vast concourse of the faithful from the neighboring cities and surrounding countryside, St. Martin was the first confessor who was not a martyr to be venerated publicly in the West. For many centuries, crowds of pilgrims came to visit his precious relics at Tours, and he is rightly regarded as the holy protector of France. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. 
O heavenly King, O comforter, the spirit of truth, watch in all places and fill us all things. Treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the glory, the glory, In signs and in miracles, thou wast renowned throughout God. By grace and the adoption, now thou art a light for the world, the march and most blessed of God. Alms, deeds, and compassion fill thy life with their splendor. Teaching and wise counsel were thy riches and treasures which thou dost dispense freely unto all them that honor thee. The charioteer of Pharaoh was sunk in olden times by Moses' rod, which wrought a mighty wonder when in the cross's form it struck the sea, dividing it in twain. And it led into safety sojourning Israel that fled by foot, Chanting to the Lord God a song of praise. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. He that received great and divine authority as a true servant of Christ, the marvelous Martin, has the power and the love to recompense with gifts of grace them that honor his memory with sincere faith and fervent zeal. Let us sing his praise and obtain his prayers. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. The famous wilderness of Egypt would not be ashamed of bringing thee forth, the worker of wonders, of the stature of the greatest, and the flame of ceaseless prayer, who spoke freely with angels as with his peers and beloved friends, Martin, the astonishing man of God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Father Martin, we do not require of thee to rend thy garment in twain, but rather the raiment of the passions of dishonor that estrange us from our God, so that clad with thy fatherly prayers and saving solicitude, we might stand with thee in that dreadful day. Both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Rejoice, O paradise, wherein the ancient serpent and deviser of death was cast from our nature, who himself cast our progenitors from paradise of old. For in thee did the author of life recover his handiwork, making thee, O virgin, the cause of joy. Of the vault of the heavens art thou, O Lord, fashioner, so too of the church art thou founder. Do thou establish me in unfeigned love for thee, who art the heart of things sought for, and the staff of the faithful, O thou only friend of man. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. Mighty kings, O suppliants, that kneeled with pleadings before thy tomb, for all who are paupers before thy riches as a servant beloved of Christ. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. Beaming with celestial joy and with this passion adorned right affair, thou wast a vision and a revelation sowing faith in the hearts of man. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Break the cords of maladies that bind us down to a bed of pain and raise us up to new strength, O Martin, as a healer of every ill. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Cleanse me of the carnal pleasures with the joy-bringing fear of God, whom thou didst bear, O holy virgin, 
and to whom thou canst lead us all. O Apostle of God, mighty man of prayer, rushing river of love, sea of miracles, O Martin, beloved of all, thou wast made wondrous by the Lord, for the potentates trembled and durst not dishonor thee, any beggar was bold to make claim on thy sympathy. Wherefore we now also importune thy compassion, and ask the abundant alms of thy prayer at the throne of God, for us who cry to thee with love. Intercede with Christ our God, that forgiveness of all their transgressions be granted to them that with longing keep thy holy memory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All ye faithful, come, let us extol the Queen, and the Mother of him who created all. With hymns let us sing her praise, magnify her, and cry to her. O thou, O lauded Virgin, thou cause of our common joy, by thy prayers do thou shelter and save them that honor thee. For thou, as God's mother, hast immeasurable freedom to take pity and to grant perfect healing of maladies. Wherefore we cry aloud to thee, entreat thy Son and God to bestow the forgiveness of their sins and trespasses upon thy servants who worship thy seedless childbirth piously. I have hearkened and heard, O Lord, of thy dispensations, more awesome mystery, and I came to knowledge of thy works, and I sang the praise of thy divinity. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. With what effort and artifice did the devil labor to catch thee in his snares, but he found he hedged about with grace, and the more he strove, the more his shame increased. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. Idols, demons, and maladies fell before thy prayer, struck with lightnings from above, for the fire of heaven dwelt in thee, working with thee in all thou didst undertake. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As thy greatest of miracles thou didst stand and move in thy deep humility, though performing dread and mighty signs, held in awe by demons, man, and angel choir. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou art hope and deliverance, unexpected joy and a balm in Gilead. For when all the world was lost in sin, thou, O Lady, bearest our deliverer. Wherefore hast thou deprived me, and cast me the hapless one far from thy countenance? And the outer darkness has enshrouded and cast its gloom over me. Yet now I beseech thee, do thou convert me and direct me to the light of thy precepts, O Lord my God. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. When a blood-guilty brigand seized thee on the mountain, intending to take thy life, thou didst rather rob him of his old unbelief with thy words of faith, for the light within thee drove off the darkness of the devil, making angels of men, O beloved of God. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. Egypt, Carthage, Phoenicia heard that Gaul had raised up their rival in holiness, and they laughed in gladness that the brightness of Christ shone so much mightily in the mighty Martin, the man of blessings and of wonders whom the Savior made famous throughout the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou didst spare the revilings of thy wild disciple who used thee with wanton spite, who as thy successor bore the wrath of the Lord for his wrongs to thee, and in his repentance was sanctified, O Father Martin vindicating thy wondrous long-suffering, both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. O oh, what swift consolation comes of a cry to the Virgin and full of grace! What illumination, what relief from affliction, what breeze of grace, what divine forgiveness, what strong desire for full amendment, what firm hope of eternal celestial life! 
Entreaty do I pour forth unto the Lord, and to him do I proclaim all my sorrows. For many woes fill my heart with replenishing, and lo, my life unto Hades has now drawn nigh. Like Jonah do I pray to thee, raise me up from corruption, O Lord my God. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. Thy love for neighbor was shown to pass through him unto God himself, when he who covered himself with light as a garment was seen wearing thy soldier's cloak, for that done to our neighbor, God receives as done unto himself. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. Thy tomb was known as a shrine, a sanctuary for those in flight, and they that falsely took oath, O Martin, invoking thee with reckless hypocrisy, reaped the bitter wages of the scorn they showed thy sanctity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. That blazing westerly star, the brimming fountain of miracles, the source of cures that no ill has strength to resist, the swift, inexorable exorcist of the unclean spirits, even Martin now is in our midst. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thy motherhood has the feast to make us children of God by grace, and thy virginity has the strength to restore us from our falls unto innocence. Awesome are thy graces, and without compare thy love for us. As a devoted man of God, thou didst proclaim his mysteries. And as a seer of the Trinity, thou didst shed thy blessings on the West. By thy prayers and entreaties, O adornment of doors and glory of all the Church, preserve us, O Saint Martin, and save all who praise thy memory. The whole of Gaul is not divided in Lording Martin, who divided into two parts his military cloak and received testimony from the Lord of Hosts. For he vied with the great Egyptians in asceticism and prayer and rivaled the apostles in working wonders, turning men from dead idols to the living God, who even now preserves all that cry, Save, O Saint Martin, all who praise thy memory. Save, O Saint Martin, all who praise thy memory. Once from out of Judea did the children go down to the land of Babylon. The fire of the furnace they trampled down while chanting by the faith in the Trinity. O God of our fathers, blessed art thou. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. On to Spain and to Scotland, to the east and the west, went the fame and good report of wonder worker Martin, who taught the pagan peoples to cry out to the Trinity, O God of our fathers, blessed art thou. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. O magnanimous Martin, cast an eye of compassion upon our sufferings, and with the grace within thee deliver, cleanse, and heal us, that we all might cry out to Christ, O God of our fathers, blessed art thou. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O all-merciful Martin, neither Goth or Barbarian had the wickedness of them that now assail us, but as the Saviour's servant, keep us safe as we cry with thee, O God of our fathers, blessed art thou. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Far beyond highest heaven, yet more near than our hearts, he who fills all in all took thee to be his mother, to make of us his children, that we all might cry out as one. O God of our fathers, blessed art thou. Let us ever extol and praise the Lord God, who is seen of old on the holy mountain glory, who by the fiery bush revealed the great mystery of the ever-virgin and undefiled maiden unto the prophet Moses. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. When the heathen who longed for thy destruction set thee under a tree whose fall they thought would crush thee, 
but saw thy blessing hurl it from thee wondrously. They renounced their error, running to the Savior who gave thee such great power. Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. After death unto many generations, thy miraculous tomb made manifest thy presence, providing sanctuary to endangered folk, healing the afflicted, punishing the lawless, and comforting the faithful. We bless the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the silence before the sacred office, thou didst strip off thy robe to clothe the naked beggar, and by a globe of fire wast thou then glorified, showing how thy mercy brought the grace of heaven upon thee in abundance. Both now and forever to the ages of ages, amen. Though a man crossed the earth in search of treasure, he in no wise would find what we have in Our Lady, unfailing intercessor with the God of all, gladness of the conscience, joy of heart and spirit, the hope of life eternal. The heavens were astonished and stood in awe, and the ends of the earth made were sore amazed. For God appeared boldly to mankind as very man, and lo, thy womb has proved to be vaster and more spacious than heaven's heights. For thee, so Theotokos, the choirs and assemblies of men and angels, magnify thy name. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. As though before thy tomb with sincere desire we the dead to bow to thee, who does live in God eternally, and we all entreat thee, thou lamp of grace, shine down upon us from the height, quickening us with rays of eternal life, so that the dead in body might help the dead of spirit, and all together might live unto God. O Holy Father Martin, pray to God for us. As oil that thou hast blessed overflow the jaws, so thy grace far exceeds the slender vessels of our praise. For the glory given thee came of God, and as thy gifts surpass our hymns, so thy grace with God does exceed our sins. O Martin, use thy boldness to pray for our salvation, and shelter us in life and at our death. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As though one of the twelve had been sent to Gaul, came illustrious Martin ablaze with apostolic grace, waging open war on the devil's reign, and having turned all men to Christ, where the gloom of idols once covered all, the much contending Martin has found his rest in heaven with all the reigning companies of saints. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. That God in his great love might become a man, thou as virgin became the mother also for our sakes, joining in thyself things at variance, that love made manifest in Christ might cast out the fear barring our return, that we, who in God's image yet fell below the cattle, be saved by the humanity of God. O Martin, man of God, like love, pierced with desire that all be saved, Thou didst destroy heathen temples, the ancient strongholds of error, and making gold the gem of Christ, resplendent with monastic saints. Thou hast obtained immortal fame as a God-bearing apostle, Forget not us who revere thee. Wisdom, most holy mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim. Thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word. The very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, O hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. 
Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Holy Father, bless. May Christ, O true God, the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist of the Holy and all praised apostles with the power and under the protection of the holy and life-giving cross of the Lord and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven. At the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Sisoes, the great brand and the navigator, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, protectors of our monastery and our community. At the prayers of St. Martin, of St. John the Merciful, Patriarch of Alexandria, of our Venerable Father Nihilus, the Foster of Sinai, with the prayers of St. Mahar of Iona, Mal and Aberdeen, with the prayers of St. Cadwallader of Wales, St. Cumian, Webmin and St. Sinal, and all of those with them whose memory we keep this day. At the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. For the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.